Robot Overview The robot is a material handling vehicle that may be operated in manual mode or automatic mode. When operating in manual mode, the movement and control of the robot is the complete responsibility of the operator. The robot may automatically tow trailers, carrying loads between different positions. These positions are defined beforehand during installation. The zones in which the robot can travel are described in the robot site installation manual. Emergency Stop Buttons The robot has five emergency stop buttons. Two emergency stops, one on either side of the move box mounting frame. Three battery disconnect switches, one on either side of the rear of the robotic truck, and one on the manual control panel. Front and Side Safety Scanners when the two side safety scanners and optional rear safety scanner are installed, they provide complete 360-degree monitoring around the robot. The front side safety scanners permit detection of obstacles and persons on both sides and in front of the robot. If an obstacle or a person is detected, the robot stops or reduces its speed, depending on the distance to the object. Field monitoring by these front side safety scanners is a plane parallel to the ground at a height of 140 millimeters, 5.5 inches. These modules provide the detection of objects 70 millimeters, 2.76 inches in diameter or more in this parallel plane. The length of the field monitored by these laser scanners varies in accordance with the robot speed. When the robot is in automatic mode, intrusion of an obstacle in the field disconnects power to all the original truck modules and activates the brake. The dimension of the field monitored by these scanners depends on the installation environment. The detection field is designed to cover the width of the tractor and the trailer. The length of the detection field adapts to the speed of the robot. Robot Approaching an Obstacle The robot is stopped by an obstacle detected by the front safety scanner. Motive power is disconnected from all the original truck motors and the brake is activated, but power is not disconnected from the move box automation controller. If the obstacle is still present, the robot remains stationary and, on the HMI, the safety status indicator illuminates orange and displays hard, refer to the Human Machine Interface HMI presentation section. Audible and visual warning signals are emitted. If the obstacle is removed, the robot resumes its current mission. Dynamic Software Fields of the Front Scanners the detection systems fitted on the robot are also configured as warning fields. This permits the detection systems to make behavior decisions, depending on the robot's environment. If a person or object, truck or other material, etc., is detected in the obstacle detection fields, the robot will slow down or stop depending on the distance of the detected obstacle from the robot. As well as avoiding risks of dangerous situations for persons and damage to the robot, this permits slowing down of the robot before reaching a hazardous area and reducing, for example, brake wear and destabilization of the load. By using the front laser scanner, the robot software can determine if an obstacle is present in the area that the truck is going to travel while completing its task. Two fields are defined in front of the robot, one for slowing down, the slow dynamic field, before reaching the hazardous area related to the obstacle, and one for stopping, the stop dynamic field, the latter is considered a hazardous area. These fields are called dynamic because the field shape changes while turning and it is projected along the planned robot travel path. The slow dynamic field is depicted in yellow and the stop dynamic field is depicted in red. Audible alarms and warning lights. The robot is fitted with a warning system consisting of an audible alarm and two flashing warning lights. The warning system signals the presence of a moving robot. The frequency of the warning lights and sounds is low when the robot is traveling straight and increases in frequency to warn personnel when turning. The flashing lights positioned on either side of the robot are controlled independently so they signal the direction of the movement. Warning and Prohibition Labels Warning and instruction labels are installed on the lift truck to provide information about possible hazards. It is important that all warning and instruction labels are installed on the lift truck and can be read. Caution! Automatic Vehicle This machine is in automatic mode. If you do not wish to intervene on the robot, keep a safe distance of 2 meters 80 inches from it in so much as it is possible. 
Beware of unexpected startup. Unauthorized riding prohibited. Do not ride on the robot in automatic mode. Only authorized operator personnel are allowed to drive the robot in manual mode. Be particularly careful near the robot, even when it seems to be stopped. It can start up at any time. Do not apply your weight or pressure on any part of the robot that is not intended for that purpose when you intervene on or operate the robot. Risk of pinching. Please ensure that nobody or any object is in this area. Pinch point hazard. If any intervention is necessary on the toe pin, make sure that there is no risk of pinching or crushing your or another person's hand or fingers. Always use personal protection equipment. In this case, protective gloves are a necessity. Curtain laser scanner for obstacle detection. The curtain scanner for obstacle detection permits stoppage of the robot when obstacles are located in an inclined field located in an oblique plane to the navigation module mounting frame. On detection, the robot is stopped, velocity is reduced to zero, and emergency stop is not triggered. The robot remains stopped until manual confirmation of removal of the obstacle via the touchscreen. During this delay, the robot indicates stoppage by warning audible and light signals. An orange safety screen with explanations is displayed. After detection of an obstacle, the robot stops and emits audible and visual warning signals. To resume automated operation, remove the obstacle and ensure that there are no obstacles near the robot. Press OK on the touch screen and leave the robot travel path. The main screen is displayed again and the robot continues its mission. During the first seconds after pressing the button, monitoring by the curtain scanner is disabled to allow the operator time to leave the monitored field. Do not remain in front of the robot. Startup Before any startup of the robot, check for equipment lockout and carry out the trained user checks indicated in the Every Shift column of the periodic maintenance schedule. Also, inspect the general robot environment and travel paths for possible obstacles the visual cleanliness of the scanner windows, and other robots that may be part of the application. If you have to move a robot in manual mode, ensure that you are authorized by the owner. Check also that the battery is connected. Refer to the original truck operator manual. If in the case of the first startup of a shift, carry out the every shift checks of the periodic maintenance schedule. Power up. If necessary, disengage the emergency stops. Turn the key switch clockwise to the on position. The touch screen first illuminates after a few seconds. Wait approximately one minute for the booting process to finish and the main screen displays as follows. HMI screen. The human machine interface screen is a digital touch screen display the operator uses to initiate functions and uses status color codes for each indicator button. Please reference the HMI control status color codes table for more information. Initialization Procedure and Initialization Points The initialization procedure is a standard procedure, but the initialization point is specific for each site or for each robot on the site. Initialization points available for each type of robot are described in the Robot Site Initialization Manual. After robot startup, position the robot on an initialization point, if this is not already the case, and carry out the initialization procedure. The initialization points have been indicated during the site dedicated training of the personnel for the robot. Initialization points are shown in the robot site installation manual. Press the init button in the top menu bar on the touch screen. A screen indicating the initialization points available for the robot is displayed. Select on this screen the point corresponding with the robot initialization point indicated during training. Once selected, press OK. The robot has to be reinitialized after switching off electrically with the key switch, malfunction of the navigation system, use in manual mode in a zone of the building that is not designated for automatic mode. Areas for automatic operations are identified in the robot site installation manual. Robot off track. The following screen displays solid the name of the initialization point that has been selected. Press the OK button if the correct initialization point is displayed. Otherwise, press Cancel. If you press Cancel, restart the initialization procedure and select the correct initialization point at. 
If the robot has been correctly initialized, a beep is heard and the two warning lights flash. The message, init OK, and a score are displayed in the main frame of the touchscreen. If initialization is not successful, move the robot and reposition it on the initialization point, and then repeat the initialization procedure. If the robot is off track, off track is displayed on the screen, and the init button also indicates off track. Follow the instructions displayed on the screen by positioning the robot on the travel path selected on the screen during the previous step. Move the robot with the manual controls in order to reposition the robot. If the robot is correctly positioned, the sign check mark is displayed below lateral gap and angular gap. When the robot is correctly positioned on its travel path, the initialization status indicator illuminates green. Automatic startup. To set the robot in automatic mode, it must meet the following conditions. Switched on and initialized, refer to the initialization procedure. No faults or emergency stops indicated. Positioned correctly on its circuit. When the initialization status indicator is illuminated orange, the robot is not correctly positioned on its travel path. The operator platform must not detect any person. Only authorized personnel are allowed to put the robot into automatic mode. To aid accurate positioning of the robot on the circuit, use the indicators available on the screen. The size of arrowheads is proportional to the gap from the circuit, so the robot must be moved, turned in the direction of the arrows to approach the circuit position. Adjust the position left-right before adjusting the angle. When you have ensured that there is no danger present and you are ready to launch the robot in automatic mode, press the menu button twice. It is colored blue and displays menu for manual mode. The robot is now in automatic mode. The touch screen is green, displays run, and can perform the tasks assigned to it. Before launching automatic mode, the operator should ensure that there are no persons or obstacles in the robot environment that may hinder automatic startup of the robot. Observe the robot behavior during the first maneuvers. In the case of abnormal operation, use the emergency stop and immediately contact qualified maintenance personnel for assistance. Typical safety distance. Before entering the perimeter of the travel area of the robots, make sure you know the safety rules for the zone. In addition to the safety rules, please respect the following recommendations. Remain on or stay in the pedestrian walkways. When possible, respect a safety distance of 2 meters, 80 inches, with each robot. Do not approach a robot in automatic mode, even if it seems to be stopped, except when the reason is to stop the robot or to put it in manual mode. Do not impede its travel path. Never position yourself in dangerous areas, and more generally, in any area from which easy escape is not possible. Refer to the residual risks section of the operator's manual. Do not follow the robot, neither alongside nor behind. Do not assist the robot in its maneuvers. Put it in manual mode first. Never climb on or pass between the trailers without activating an emergency stop. Normal stop in automatic mode. Place an object such as a traffic cone at more than 3 meters directly in front of the robot in order to be detected by the safety scanner. Allow the robot to slow down. While remaining in the field of the front safety scanner, carry out the following actions. Press one of the emergency stop buttons. Press the run button on the touch screen. Emergency stop in automatic mode. Check the warning indicator lights to ensure that the robot is not going to turn in your direction and, if it is safe, press one of the emergency stop buttons without impeding the travel path of the robot. Caution! Under certain circumstances, if the robot is approached from the front, the robot may not stop in time. Examples include too close resulting in insufficient braking distance, not in detection field, etc. Activation of the emergency stop immediately activates the brake and shuts down power to the truck traction and steering, but the robot move box and sensors remain on. Caution, it can take the robot about 1 meter, 3 feet or more to stop after pressing an emergency stop button. Be aware. Operation in manual mode. When the robot is in manual mode, it is designed to behave as indicated in the original truck operator manual. If you notice any difference between the actual operation and that indicated in the original truck operator manual, 
stop and disable the robot immediately. Switching off. Robot stop times of less than two hours are considered temporary. In this case, it is acceptable to switch the robot to manual mode and leave the power on. Do not leave a robot switched on in manual mode for more than a few hours. Its power supply may discharge to an irreversible level. If the robot stop time will be longer than two hours, it is considered prolonged. In this case, switch the power off to prevent damage to the power supply caused by excessive discharge. Temporary stop. Switch the robot to manual mode if it is not already. Move the robot to a safe area if it is not already the case or cordon off the location. Prolonged stop. Perform a temporary stop. Turn the on off key counterclockwise to the off position. Remove the key. All power is now disconnected from the robot. Power pack management. The robot is provided with a management solution for power pack level. Your robot displays a power pack battery indicator gauge visible on the top right of the main screen of the touchscreen monitor. Normal level. The charge is sufficient and the gauge symbol is green. Low power pack battery level. If a low energy screen is displayed, the gauge symbol is orange. The battery must be charged. Critical power pack battery level. If the power pack reaches a critical level of discharge, a critical energy screen appears. The robot embarks on a movement towards a predefined destination in your installation to signal to an operator the need to manually recharge, replace the power pack. Proceed to a free charger for automatic recharging, optional. Wait for freeing of an automatic charging station, optional. Disconnecting the power pack. Press the main contactor, energy stop, of the robot. Open the power pack compartment cover and disconnect the 24 volt plug. Close the power pack compartment cover. We hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.